For this video, I was lucky enough to be sent this, the RDK X3. This is a new board to hit the market from a company called D Robotics in China. It's a single board computer, similar to a Raspberry Pi 5, except it has an extra chip on it which can run AI models at a very high frame rate. For instance, Yolo V5 will run at 24 to 26 FPS on this board. Now the company sent this to me for free, but the video isn't sponsored by them. They also sent me a robot kit called the Origin Bot, which I'll show you how to set up in future videos. But it's what I use to test out the AI applications in this video. And that's what I'm going to be showing you. Three different AI applications. Yolo V5 for object detection, Mono 2D body detection for skeleton tracking, and a simple LLM although I'm not sure the source of the LLM. For each one, I'll show you how it works, the kind of performance I'm getting from it, and give you my thoughts on how well they work. Let's start with YOLO V5. This is the documentation from D Robotics for running example applications on the RDK X3. On the left, there's a lot of different examples, but I'm running YOLO. YOLO is you only look once, and there's several models available, including up to YOLO V5X, now, because I've got the X3 module, it supports up to YOLO V5. But the X5, which isn't currently on the market at time of recording, can go up to V10 or even further if there are more recent versions. There are instructions here on how to run the example. So I can take this line because I'm running a USB camera and I can SSH into my robot. Here I am in the RDK as the root user, and now I can paste in the command. However, there's one issue, which is that to switch between models of YOLO, I need to change the config. So I need to go into the middle of the line and change YOLO v2 to YOLO v5. Now I can run this. You can see here that the image FPS is at about 30 and the smart FPS is 23 to about 27, depending on what the robot is looking at. So let's have a look in the browser and see what images are being recognized. If you navigate to the robot's IP address colon 8000, this is the web page that appears. If we click this link here, it opens the video streaming page. And now the robot is able to start recognizing images. You can see I've laid out some objects here for it to look at. You can see that it can recognize there's a cup, which it sometimes recognizes. It briefly flashes up. It can very reliably recognize the vase and potted plant. There's a TV remote and a bottle that it recognizes very reliably. And then it's a tape measure, which is sometimes recognized as a mouse and earlier was recognized as a Frisbee. So you can see that the model doesn't recognize all kinds of objects. There's a limited amount that it was trained on, which is 80 classes from the COCO data set. If it's not in that data set, further training is required. Another thing to note here is the FPS in the bottom is looking at about 24 to 25, uh, even down to 23, but I think 24 to 25 is representative and the AI delay is at about 600 milliseconds. So if I move the robot from side to side, there is a noticeable delay but it is still a smooth frame rate. This is the live view, but let's take a look at what it can recognize in some still images that are potentially useful in a robotics application. Here's some of the images I tried with my YOLO model because uh, I didn't have access to everything at home. First up, the living room. So here's the image without the YOLO model running on it. And here's what the YOLO model was able to see. You can see that it's got a couple of couches in there and a couple of chairs in the background, but not a lot of detail otherwise. So for this, I'd expect a robot to be able to navigate autonomously, maybe clean up the room, for example. And because it can't see all the objects that are there, like the coffee table that's in the foreground, it probably wouldn't do that good a job. In this case, I think it would need to be retrained before it could really be useful. The next one is just a high street. Imagine that you have a delivery rover that's trying to take a package to a location. It would need to navigate areas like this, including the people and the cars that are present. So here's the image before recognition. And here's the image having been run through the model. You can see there's several backpacks recognized which aren't that useful, but everything else is useful, like all the people that are being recognized very reliably, the cars on the road, and even a traffic light off to the right. This is the sort of detail that you would need as a robot to be able to autonomously navigate. 
In this case, I don't think retraining is necessary. YOLO v5 out of the box seems to be ready to use for autonomous navigation. The third example is an underwater image. So imagine you have a submarine that you want to navigate and map the sea floor. This is the kind of image that it would need to be able to understand and maneuver around. And here's the image having run through the model. You can see that there's only one bounding box and all it got from it was a bird. I know it's hard to tell because it's blue text on a blue background, but that's labeled a fish as a bird and that's the only object it's recognized. This is what you get when the model isn't trained on the kind of images that you're feeding it. It just doesn't understand what anything is in this picture. It's not trained on fish. This model would need to be quite heavily retrained before it could be used in a scenario like this. Here's a warehouse image where a robot might be expected to autonomously navigate to be able to move packages around, for example. Some robots have their own environment so that they can operate without humans present, but if you want a more intelligent robot application, it would need to be able to operate around other people and around obstacles. And here's how it did. The only thing it recognized were the people in the image, which is great for being able to navigate around those, but for all the boxes that they're carrying, it would have no idea that that's there and how to navigate around it. So a partial success here, it would be able to do some navigation, but would still need retraining or other sensor data to be able to autonomously navigate. Overall, mixed results from YOLO v5. Three out of the four still images would probably need retraining before you could use them in a real robotics application. Although looking at the London street showed surprisingly good results. What's more impressive is that the frame rate from this is really smooth. It wasn't quite 30 FPS, but 24 to 26 FPS is more than fast enough to run a real robot application. So if you need a board that can do YOLO V5 or better on board, and it can do it in real time, the RDK X3 is a good way to go. Next, let's take a look at the skeleton recognition algorithm. The next example is the skeleton tracking, and this is from the pose detection page in the documents which will be linked in the description. And essentially what this application does is it uses skeleton tracking and the points detected from the skeleton tracking to determine if someone has fallen down. So if we use this command, the fall down detection application and run it on the robot. With that started, we again go to the browser and now we can see that it's able to detect my skeleton. It can see my joints as I move, it can see key points on my body and it can see as I move around and you can see the kind of frame rate here is a stable 30 frames per second and it's detecting the skeleton very reliably. The skeleton tracking was by far my favorite model to run out of this experiment. How reliable it was in the frame rate as it could run a smooth 30 frames per second and how uh, reliably I identified the key points of my body I showed some, but there was more where it could reliably detect my legs showing out of shot of the camera, or at least making a good approximation. Overall, I think this is ready to use in a real robotics application out of the box, and it runs smoothly on the RDK. Finally, we'll take a look at a simple LLM that can run directly on the board. And the final application is a simple LLM. This is the GitHub repository for the LLM. You can see that it was archived in 2024. I'm not exactly sure why. I'm wondering if it's something to do with the RDK model zoo that I'll talk about in a moment. But what this is essentially doing is running an LLM directly on the board. Now, there are some setup instructions, but I found that there's not enough. I had to figure out a couple of extra steps that I'm going to show you. So first, you can make sure the board is up to date using an RDK mini boot update. Once that's complete, you need to run some extra config to reserve some memory on the BPU so that it can run the LLM. You can use SRPI config and then go through to performance options, ion memory, and make sure 1900 megabytes is reserved. Even then, I had some issues making this work because I was doing it before doing the update. But if you need to check how much memory is reserved, you can do an RDK OS info. And you can see the ion memory size here is listed as 1900 megabytes. So this is ready to run the LLM. There's two ways to run the LLM. One is that you can chat with it, and the other is that you can run it using ROS topics. The chat is how I want to interact with it. 
if I was using a real robotics application, then I'd go with the LLM and I would publish messages to it and see what it responds in ROS2 topics. But this chatbot is what I will use in this case. Now, if you're running this for yourself, it does take some time to start up, roughly a minute and a half. And now the model's loaded, we can start to give it statements like, uh, what is your name? And you can see the, the LLM's name is Alex. There you go. Now I do have occasional issues. The LLM seems to change behavior every time I run it. Often it responds in Chinese and I have to ask it to respond in English. On this occasion, it seems to be responding in English already. So let's try and give it a command that we try and use during a real robotics application. For example, the robot is stuck. It doesn't know how to proceed. Maybe the problem is I am stuck. The information that it can give is I can see a couch, a chair, a chair, and a vase. And the question to the LLM, what do I do? Now I'm letting the LLM respond in real time. I'm not speeding this up or cutting so that you can see how fast it is. And there's the response. You can do anything you like which is not really that useful in this situation. Let's try, I don't know what to do. How can I become unstuck? And the response, you can try to think outside the box. I think in this, it's, in this situation, the LLM is not helping our robot get free of its sticky situation. We can see the kind of response time is roughly 10 to 15 seconds. It can be longer for more complicated queries and the responses themselves are really not that useful. So this particular large language model isn't that useful to us in a real robotics application. Perhaps a different LLM would respond better. What's more impressive is that it's able to run on the board at all. This is all responding in real time and only running locally. Overall, the LLM was my least favorite model to run. Unfortunately, it just didn't give me very good results. When I tried to ask it something that would be reasonable in a robotics application for the robot trying to solve a problem, like how do I navigate this environment I don't know, something unexpected has happened, it just didn't give very good results. The thing that's giving me pause is that it gave me such wrong results that I'm wondering if I ran something wrong or if there's a better model that should be running. Either way, I'm not completely surprised at the results because LLMs are by definition, large language models. They're huge. They're not meant to run on something the size of this board. It's impressive enough that the board can run it, although it can only run giving a response in 15 to 30 seconds. So not great for actually running in a real robot application except as a last resort. So I would say cool that it can be run, but not yet useful. Keep working on it. And the last thing that I wanted to talk about is the RDK model zoo. This is a sample repository made available by DRobotics, which contains a lot of their sample models that you can run and test how they work on the robot. The repository contains Jupyter notebooks for lots of different types of uh, model, like the YOLO 11 pose model, uh, YOLO V8 segmentation. Unfortunately, when I tried to run it on my X3, the Python bindings uh, weren't importing correctly. When I contacted the team about it, they confirmed that the Python bindings are currently not working as of time of recording. Hopefully this is something that we'd see improve in the future. However, the C++ interface, which is what's used for the applications I've shown so far, does function correctly. So if you wanted to develop your own AI applications, the C++ interface will work just fine. So there we've seen the three AI models that I experimented with from this RDK X3. Now, there's a lot more models available. These are just the ones that I thought would be fun and interesting to try out and see what kind of performance I can get from them. If you did want to try some of them for yourself, the link to buy an RDK X3 is in the description, as well as a link to the documentation that talks you through how to run these AI applications. I'll also be showing how to set up one of these origin bots with an RDK X3 inside to run robot AI applications. I'll be recording videos on how to build the robot and how to run the applications so that you can see it following people around, for example. Until then, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.